The pain pods presented by Trumeau Pharmaceuticals and is intended for educational and informational purposes only. Please speak to medical professionals before making any treatment decisions and visit TrumeauRx.com to learn more about their work. There's no such thing as real or unreal pain. Pain doesn't know gender or culture or anything, right? It afflicts us all. Because it affects so many people in often profound ways. You know, you do a lot of thinking when you're in pain. I think it gives you a certain perspective on life. Definitely did not want to accept it, and I also didn't believe that that was really the plan for my life. I always get through it, though. Always. My earliest memory of pain is from about six years old. My dad was teaching me to ride a bike, with his hands guiding the handlebars. Mine just held on next to his, as I was mainly getting the gist of pedaling. I still remember the moment I could feel myself completely stable in the saddle, perfectly balanced, the ground beneath me, the bike centered under me. Oh, this is it. I'm riding a bike! Without warning or really much thought, though in fairness I was six, so there really wasn't much thought put into anything, I started to pedal fast with a newfound abandon. I gripped the handlebars tight, broke away from my father, and took off. I couldn't believe what was happening. This was the fastest I'd ever gone in my life, the most thrilling moment of my young life, spearheading a quest away from timidity, authority, and rule toward bravery, curiosity, and freedom. The circular nature of this particular park's bike path and my having never successfully ridden a bike before meant that after about four seconds, I crashed head on into a bench. I don't remember much else from that day. I don't remember what I was wearing or what exactly happened after the crash. I do remember the pain, the throbbing and pulsating, the tingling sensation of blood escaping the vessels, the warmth and mounting pressure felt inside my joints. I remember feeling like a volcano had erupted inside of me. It was scary. I remember crying a lot too. People with hemophilia, like me, are susceptible to prolonged bleeding into joints or muscles, especially after blunt force trauma. And while treatment is available, an immune response, commonly referred to as an inhibitor, essentially rendered my medicine ineffective, making an incident like this that much more damaging. For most of the following week or so, I was laid up on the couch. My ankles ballooned with inflammation, and even the slightest amount of pressure caused a deep, bellowing pain. Home from school for a while, I passed the time watching morning game shows, eating sugary cereal, and chatting with my grandmother while I watched her sketch my Star Wars figurines. Distraction and emotional eating have always been amongst my go-to pain management techniques, for better or worse. Fast forward now about 14 years, we're in a period of about 11 months, I lost that grandmother, my only brother, and experienced a failed pregnancy. After these events, a different kind of pain entered my life. Equally crippling to that which physically disabled me at times, though even more unseen than the invisible disease of hemophilia or the quiet suffering from arthritis. Fast forward another 14 years or so to 2020. I am 34 now, I have severe osteoarthritis in both ankles, a more mild form in both knees, and what I've taken to simply calling a crickety elbow. I've spent years in therapy for PTSD, generalized anxiety disorder, and moderate depressive disorder. I have tried various mood stabilizers and enhancing supplements, and I've taken to practices such as meditation, journaling, and exercise, all to help me live as balanced as possible. Pain has played a profound role in my life, physically, mentally, emotionally. It's demanding, mysterious, debilitating, isolating, and yet it's also not uncommon. Studies have shown that more than half of all Americans have experienced a pain event in the last three months, and according to a 2019 Health and Human Services Pain Management Task Force, 50 million adult Americans live with chronic daily pain, with 20 million of them experiencing high-impact pain, pain pain-affecting activities of daily life or work. Pain has cost our country between $560 and $635 billion, All the while, we've spun into an opioid crisis that has resulted in an unprecedented wave of overdose deaths associated with prescription opioids, heroin, and synthetic opioids. We have seen nearly drug overdose deaths increase by more than three times from about 20,000 a year to 60,000 a year, 
over the past 20 years. And between 2013 and 2018 alone, deaths related to fentanyl or other non-methadone synthetic narcotics increased by more than five times from over 5,000 deaths a year to around 30. According to the NIH, chronic pain is one of the most common reasons adults seek medical care. And yet stigma, insurance and access issues, and lack of education present serious barriers. So with pain as pervasive and problematic as it is, with so much money and so many resources going into better understanding it, and with pain being a major motivator that actually gets people to seek medical care, what have we actually learned about pain? What do we know? Are we, societally, any closer to effective pain management today than we were, say, 20 years ago? Are we trending well, at least? The numbers don't really seem to suggest so. And in order to reduce stigma, raise awareness, and stimulate education, how do we talk about pain? To each other. To our doctors. To our kids. That's what the pain pod is set to explore. In season one, we speak to expert clinicians across various pain-related disciplines to learn from their research and their clinical and therapeutic experiences. And we speak to people of various walks of life who are living with chronic pain to better appreciate the realities and practicalities of living in pain. And we speak to, dare I say, a contrarian or two who don't necessarily agree with some of the professional thinking of the day when it comes to pain. It's a big topic, pain. And we won't get to everything in these next six episodes, but we will cover a lot. So be sure to subscribe to The Pain Pod on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to ensure you receive the latest episode as soon as it's available. And with so many people affected by chronic pain, chances are you have at least one friend or family member who might really appreciate The Pain Pod. Please share The Pain Pod with friends and family. And thanks for joining us. Oh, and I should have mentioned, I'm Patrick James Lynch your host for season one of The Pain Pod. The Pain Pod is produced by Bloodstream Media and made possible thanks to our sponsor, Tremo Pharmaceuticals. Tremo is founded with the goal of developing and delivering non-opioid pain therapies for people with rare diseases and other select patient conditions. Tremo is currently investigating two COX-2 selective NSAIDs. NSAID, for those who aren't familiar, stands for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. While neither of these treatments are FDA approved, they are in clinical trials, and you can learn more about those trials, Tremo's mission, and the dedicated team leading it by going to tremorx.com. That's T R E M E A U R X.com. Tremo, leading the way for those left behind in pain. Pain's important, uh, I think, because it affects so many people in often profound ways. My name is Tyler Buckner. I'm a hematologist uh, and physician at the University of Colorado. My patients are important to me and I want to help them and make them better and to be able to live better lives. And often pain stands in the way of that, uh, quite often. My research and expertise is really focused on um, how we can measure pain in a way that reflects, uh, truly reflects the experience of pain that someone has. Um, For a lot of people what happens is they get told by a doctor or physician that says, you have this, this is who you are. This is Dr. Daniel Lyman, a psychotherapist and mental health coach specializing in chronic pain. You're someone with a bad back, you're someone with a bad knee, you're someone with migraines, and this is just the way it's going to be. And then it really becomes part of your identity. I'm a good example. My name is Dr. Jennifer Huggins. I'm a clinical pain psychologist. I was told that I had a diagnosis called interstitial cystitis, which by definition is incurable. So I was told that. Um, And when you're told something like that, it's quite upsetting it's short you know it takes you down a road it takes you down often a long road that leads to nowhere the most challenging part would be 
doctors telling me that I would be in pain for the rest of my life, um, that there were no answers. This is Ryan Macy. He experienced a devastating car accident that left him in chronic pain for 15 years. I was given some narcotics. I was always pretty um, hesitant to, to try that again, being told I was in pain, but could be in pain for the rest of my life. Um, at such a young age, I didn't want to be on pain, on pain medication for, for that long. So I um, tried different things, but actually none of them ever actually helped. I think we often reach a point where it may seem that way. Um, but there are often solutions that someone hasn't thought of. Um, you know, does this, could this person benefit from surgery or a different approach to um, medication management for pain or perhaps mental health uh, resources? Really, it's, it's getting to the bottom of, yeah, I, I see you have pain. I see why you have pain. And what does that mean? You know, what is it keeping you from doing or, or what is it making you do that you don't want to do? I always think of one specific man that uh, I was seeing in the clinic who uh, has a chronic medical condition, a bleeding disorder called hemophilia. And as I was talking to him about his joint problems and pain that he'd had through his life, he said to me that for him, uh, hemophilia, having hemophilia means living with pain. Uh, and that statement has always stuck with me because I've always struggled with whether that's really true or whether it has to be true or whether it's something that we can change. It's very common. It's actually an epidemic. Chronic pain, if we're talking about chronic pain. We all have pain, you know, acute pain that we get from time to time. But chronic pain in and of itself is actually an epidemic. It is widespread. It is something that's poorly treated. Um, it is something that um, it's so commonly found. There's actually a I don't know the exact statistic, but there's um, more chronic pain in the United States than diabetes, cancer and heart disease combined. Wow. So that's something that we hear a lot, that, that actual phrase and that, that sentence is that we have so much chronic pain out there. And the reason we have an opioid epidemic is because of that. As a clinical pain psychologist, I work with clients who come to me to resolve chronic pain, often after years of struggling to find an answer. Chronic pain is pain that persists past three months, is usually not structurally caused or caused by tissue damage, and is very different than acute pain, which is structurally caused and lasts three months or less. Examples of acute pain are a broken arm, sprained ankle, or a burn. This is the type of pain that is treated well medically and pain that we all know and understand. The problem is that we tend to apply our acute pain file to chronic pain as if it's the same type of pain, which it certainly is not. And we're off onto the medical merry-go-round until, if we're lucky, we find a new and brash approach. Pain is actually a really, really useful signal until it's not. It tells us something's going on. So it's a protective mechanism. It's a mechanism in the brain designed to protect you. And in chronic pain, it's not a useful signal. It's not telling us anything important. So it's a signal that's gone awry. But when we have acute pain, it's telling us, hey, something's wrong. You know, we need to stop and stop whatever it is that's you know causing the pain, like if we're on the hot stove or if we just broke our arm, we need to know that so we can stop, take action and fix it. And that sequence of stop, take action, fix it is what gets carried over wrongly or inappropriately in chronic pain. Personally, when I graduated from undergrad, that's when like I was dealing with a, a a decent amount of my own pain, most of it being like migraine type pain. Dr. Daniel Lyman again. Like Dr. Huggins, he too has a personal experience of pain that motivates his professional work in the area. 
You know, I didn't even really consider myself like a chronic pain person at that at that point. I just thought I had migraines. And for a while, I thought it was like a brain tumor or something. And I don't know if I ever really thought it was that, but that was kind of in the back of my head, no pun intended. I actually just moved to L.A. and was um, really stressed out all the time <laughs> like and really broke, which didn't help the stress. Um, and I was driving an hour and a half each way to work, which was not helpful. And uh, I was just getting really bad migraines. There was a period of time where it was like just absolutely painful to have like the lights on. I would like close the blinds and keep all the lights off and like lay in bed for long periods of time because it was just really, really painful. Through reading a few things and also just kind of like coaching myself, I, I, I was able to get out of it that first time. And then they kind of came back and it wasn't until I uh, was in grad school and learning about pain and understanding my own psychology that I kind of put all the pieces together about how um, the, the amount of stress I was under and the way I was treating myself during that time was affecting the way I felt physically. I had a guy that I saw in my private practice who had uh, what he said an old football injury and it was only one knee and that he had pain in. And he didn't even come in to see me for pain. It wasn't the primary issue. He came in for other problems, um, emotional stuff that was going on in his relationship, right? And one day he came in with a knee brace on, and that's like, ding! I said, what's going on there? And he said, oh, I have an old football injury. And I said, okay, can we talk about it for a minute? And we talked about it, and then it really came up that he was really struggling with this pain. And he knew I was a pain psychologist, but he had never really, we just didn't go down that road because most people don't link the two, so he didn't really talk about it. He really came in for emotional problems. Um, and he was told he had arthritis in his knee, and that's what was causing his pain. And we worked together. He was one of the most open clients, surprisingly, uh, to everything once he do dove in and learned about it, and his pain went away. And he had arthritis in his knee. To use one of Dr. Huggins' terms, it certainly isn't brash, suggesting that there's some connection between physical, psychological, and emotional pain. But just how connected are they? Did this football player's arthritic pain really just go away once his emotional problems were handled? Can reducing stress actually be enough to remove chronic migraines? So uh, 15 years ago, I was in a rollover car accident uh, where the roof of the car came down on my head. Um, I had a severe head injury and a neck fracture. The doctors had to sedate me and um, they didn't know if I was going to survive. Um, they definitely thought I, it was likely that I could be paralyzed. I'm Ryan Massey and I have found healing from 15 years of chronic pain. You'll hear more on this and much else in episode two of The Pain Pod. The Pain Pod is written and directed by me, Patrick James Lynch, produced and edited by Greg Holdsman, artwork by Ryan Geelan and Christina Newhard, post-production support from Joshua Bragg, Rob Bradford, and Avra Friedman. The Pain Pod is produced by Bloodstream Media and presented by Tremeau Pharmaceuticals. Learn more about Tremeau and the work they're doing to help alleviate pain by visiting T-R-E-M-E-A-U-R-X dot com. Subscribe, rate, and share the pain pod. Referrals from you are the best way we can reach new people. Thanks for listening. My name is Patrick James Lynch, and we'll be back next week with episode two of the pain pod. <laughs>